at the heart of the theme park capital of the world, between Universal, SeaWorld and Walt Disney World, International Drive Orlando attracts vacationers and conventioners from around the world to its resorts, attractions and restaurants, but with so many different dining options to choose from, you may need a helping hand to decide where to eat when visiting Central Florida's main tourist strip. Hi, I'm the Frugal Brit, and for this video, I will outline my ranking of the top 10 best reasonably priced restaurants on International Drive, specifically the area between the Convention Center and the Endless Summer Resort to the north. I should warn that for this ranking, I haven't discriminated against any chain restaurants. There are quite a few in here, so if you are looking for a bias towards smaller independent restaurants, a reasonable preference, of course, but unfortunately, this probably isn't the video for you. Before we get to the restaurants, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on future guides, reviews, and other Orlando vacation content. To start my ranking, we'll head north of International Drive on the east side for Cafe Monero Brazilian Steakhouse, located near the Avanti Palms Resort and the Rosen Inn nearest Universal. Cafe Monero provides up to 12 different cuts of slow roasted meats cooked over a Brazilian churrascaria presented on skewers and carved table side by the Pasador at your request. There's also a variety of salads, pastas, rice, and renowned feijoada. So you have the option of purchasing the cheaper all you can eat buffet option for $17.95 with fresh food served at the salad bar with a small selection of meats. Or you can go for the Brazilian experience, which features the 12 different meats. And this option will cost you $26.95 for lunch and $32.95 for dinner. If you're not in the mood for buffet, then they also have you covered with a few different appetizer and entree options, which range between $13 and $30. Those that rate Cafe Monero appreciate its excellent value for a Brazilian steakhouse. It's super friendly staff, even when busy. I did see quite a lot of Brazilians eating here, which is always a good sign. However, I think it's fair to say, not the most elegant decor. And when it comes to the food, I did personally find that the meats lack a bit of flavor and were noticeably inferior compared to those served at Fogo de Chao, which is also on iDrive. But crucially, Cafe Monero is half the price. Next at nine, we have the famous casual dining restaurant chain known as Olive Garden, located just north of Point Orlando and a short walk from the Avanti International Resort and the Rosen Inn at Point Orlando. I appreciate many of you will know all about the Olive Garden, but I know many of my fellow Brits will not be familiar. So Olive Garden specializes in casual Italian-American cuisine, mostly pasta dishes, but also steaks and salads. It was established back in Orlando in 1982. In terms of its decor, it claims to be inspired by farmhouses in Tuscany. Its appetizers range between eight and $12, and its entrees range between 16 and $20. The menu is ginormous, but its highlights include its famous endless garlic breadsticks, the chicken Alfredo, the shrimp scampi fritter, and the chocolate brownie lasagna. At risk of reigniting an old meme, I will attempt to provide a quick review of an Olive Garden. So what it lacks in authenticity, it makes up for with incredible service, huge portions and great value. Personally, I quite like the decor, better than most of the restaurants in this list, I think. The downsides are that it's obviously not the most upscale or authentic Italian food. And this particular Olive Garden does get quite busy, so expect to have to wait for a table during peak times. For number eight, we have the sports-themed casual dining chain restaurant, which is Miller's Ale House, which is a three-minute walk from Point Orlando and next door to the Ice Bar and opposite the Rosen Inn at Point Orlando. Miller's specializes in American bar, grill, and pub food and has a full-service bar that offers 35 beers on tap with a large selection of signature cocktails and pitchers. You can eat and drink indoors or outside on its patio, which has plenty of seating and TVs for live sports. Apparently a popular hangout for Universal employees. Its appetizers average at around $10 and its entrees range between $11 and $22. Miller's is most famous for its buttermilk drenched, hand breaded boneless zingers and zingers mountain melt. Other highlights include the gigantic chicken nachos and its Captain Jack dessert. 
Those that rate Miller's Ale House point to its huge portions. Most dishes can be split between two people. It has a great lively and friendly atmosphere, so a good choice if you're looking to watch some live sports. However, it will naturally be too loud for some. Not a good choice if you're looking for a chilled dining experience. It's not the most high-end cuisine, obviously. And lastly, the quality of service is very sensitive to how busy they are. For number seven, I've gone for the Caribbean-inspired Bahama Breeze restaurant, which is a short walk from the previous two entries opposite Dave & Buster's and the Olive Garden, and a short walk from both the Avanti International Resort as well as Homewood Suites. Bahama Breeze has a vibrant island theme and specializes in all sorts of American, Caribbean, Cuban and Jamaican cuisine with handcrafted cocktails. In the evenings you can enjoy island themed live Caribbean soul music. The appetizers range between $7 and $14 and the entrees average at roughly $15. The highlights include the coconut shrimp, the seafood paella and the blackened mahi tacos. Similar to Miller's, those that rate Bahama Breeze appreciate its atmosphere, especially on the outside patio. The live music is fantastic without being too loud for conversation. Value-wise, it's decent, but I would argue maybe not as good as some of the other choices in this list, but it's really the ambience that attracts most to this restaurant. For number six, it's another short walk away from the previous entry for the Cafe Tutu Tango Tapas restaurant, which is about a five minute walk from Icon Park next to the Pirate's Cove Adventure Golf and the Castle Hotel. This restaurant was founded in 1991 by a group of friends inspired by the artists and culture in Barcelona. It specializes in Mexican, American and Latin cuisine. Guests enjoy live entertainment. You'll also find resident artists working in the restaurant whilst you dine. And their artwork lines the restaurant walls and is available to purchase. The tapas style small plates menu features a wide array of shareable dishes, which range between eight and $11. But as always with tapas, you'll likely want to order multiple dishes. The highlights for Cafe Tutu Tango include the dynamite shrimp, the alligator bites, the Cuban sliders and the cheesecake lollipops. Those that rate Cafe Tutu Tango love its eclectic menu, its live music and bohemian atmosphere. It is without a doubt the most unique restaurant on International Drive. Worth mentioning that it's a great option for vegetarians and vegans, but it won't be for everyone. Obviously many won't appreciate the tapas style portions. It doesn't compete that well with many other restaurants in this list for value. Lastly, some will not appreciate how loud the music is. To start the second half of my ranking, I've gone for the famous American sports bar chain known as the Yard House, which occupies prime real estate on Icon Park, the first restaurant on your left as you enter, and next door to Buffalo Wild Wings. The name Yard House is derived from the early colonial tradition of serving 36 inch tall glasses known as yards. The Yard House claims to have the world's largest selection of draft beers with over 100 on tap and an array of craft cocktails. For its food, it aims for globally inspired flavors with American favorites, all to be enjoyed to a classic rock soundtrack. The appetizers average at $11 and the entrees come in around $18. The highlights include the poke nachos, the street tacos, the Cajun jambalaya, and their USDA Prime Burgers. Those that rate the Yard House enjoy its energetic atmosphere, its incredible service, big portions, its excellent selection of beers, definitely the best pick for any beer aficionados. Whilst it does get very busy, it's a well-oiled machine. They have an efficient weight system where you take one of those buzzers. A couple of reasons why you might not want to pick Yard House are that the music is pretty loud, not the most exciting menu, and there are some slightly better value options on iDrive. At number four, we have the Coco Thai restaurant, which opened back in 2017, located on the north end of iDrive, within convenient walking distance of the Endless Summer Surfside Inn and Suites Resort, and also next to the Lost Caverns Adventure Golf. Coco Thai is a family-owned restaurant serving Thai cuisine with both indoor and outdoor seating. 
It features an open kitchen, which I understand is pretty unique for a Thai restaurant. Its appetizers average at $9 and its entrees average at $19. Its highlights include its pad thai, its green curry, and the kwa soy. Those that rate Coco Thai appreciate its authentic and flavorful Thai dishes with great presentation and big portions at reasonable prices, all within a modern and spacious interior. I don't know anyone that's had any bad service here. It also has the claim of being one of the few non-chain restaurants that can hold its own on iDrive. The only reason I can think of not to choose this restaurant would be if you have any picky eaters in your group or if you simply just don't like Thai cuisine. For my third best restaurant on International Drive, I've gone for what is arguably the people's favorite iDrive chain restaurant, which is Longhorn Steakhouse, located a couple doors north of Icon Park next to Ripley's Believe It or Not. Longhorn Steakhouse has a Western Texas saloon theme, but its roots actually lie in Georgia when it gained attraction after offering $1 drinks to the locals during a hazardous snowstorm. Today, the restaurant on iDrive is decorated with paintings, photos, and selected Western memorabilia. It specializes in steaks seasoned with their signature spice blend. The appetizers at Longhorn Steakhouse cost $9 on average, and the entrees range between $13 and $30. Its highlights include the Outlaw Ribeye, the Longhorn Porterhouse, the Longhorn Salmon, and the Parmesan Crusted Chicken. Those that rate Longhorn Steakhouse point to its great location, its huge and perfectly cooked steaks. Personally, I'm not aware of another steakhouse that provides better bang for your buck on iDrive. The saloon decor works very well. One reason why you might not want to pick Longhorn Steakhouse is the fact that there are better steakhouses on iDrive such as Charlie's or the Capitol Grill, it's just that they are significantly more expensive. For the second best restaurant in my ranking I've gone for the Ashirwad Indian Food and Bar and I've had to break the rules a bit here as it does go past the endless summer resort but it is within walking distance so seemed reasonable to take the liberty here I think especially given how tasty the food is. So Ashirwad Indian food aims to provide a mixture of modern Indian, traditional Indian and Indian street food whilst representing the culture and heritage of its founder who learnt his craft in New Delhi and Goa before venturing over to the US. Its small plates which include your samosas and onion bhajis etc range between $6 and $12 and its entrees, most if not all of which come with rice, range between $14 and $22. Its highlights include its onion bhajis, its various naan breads, the pepper shrimp, the chicken lollipop, and the merg kali merch. Those that rate Ashirwad appreciate its simple yet elegant decor, its authentic Indian cuisine, its fast and friendly service, some of the best Indian food I've ever had. However, not everyone loves Indian food as much as I do. Maybe not one for picky eaters. There's better value restaurants in this ranking. And lastly, not the best location being miles away from both Icon Park and Point Orlando and not close enough to any of the big hotel resorts. But at least this makes it easier to get a parking space. My top pick for the best restaurant on International Drive is Maggiano's Little Italy, which is located on the northwest corner of Point Orlando, which is next to the Wonderworks building and opposite the Rosen Inn at Point Orlando. This huge restaurant, which takes up a lot of space in Point Orlando, which is also suitable for big events, has a large patio area. Its original concept was to recreate the classic pre-World War II dinner hospitality at your Italian grandmother's house to enjoy the rich flavors of Italian-American dishes in family-style portions. You'll often be greeted by Sinatra music at an acceptable volume with tables lined with red checkers and the candle burning. Its menu features both classic and contemporary recipes and you can order single-sized portions or full multi-course family-style meals. 
Its appetizers range between $10 and $18, and there's a broad price range for entrees due to some of the steak and veal options. So these range between $17 and $15, but you'll be pleased to know that they average at around $23. If you opt for the family style menu, this will cost $18 for kids and $38 for adults. Its highlights include the lasagna, the Denver steak, the Johnny's carbonara, and the tiramisu. Those that rate Maggiano's appreciate its lively but welcoming atmosphere, its incredible service, high quality Italian food in generous portions. You're genuinely treated like family. The staff really do go the extra mile. I've always had nothing but top class service here, even when extremely busy. It has a nicer ambience than a lot of the other steakhouses on iDrive in my opinion. The only reasons I can think as to why you wouldn't want to pick Maggiano's would be if you don't like Italian food or that you're looking for a better value restaurant. If you are planning to dine at Maggiano's, do make sure you get your reservations booked in as it is very popular. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you have an awesome trip to International Drive whenever that is. This ranking is for reasonably priced restaurants only. So if you are willing to spend a little bit more, I'll include a list of the best restaurants if money isn't a consideration. Do check out my other videos for additional guides and reviews for Universal and Disney World. Lastly, if you're interested in future Orlando vacation content, don't forget to subscribe.